uh, you're spending some time with um, with Evelyn Cessna as she has a bed and breakfast at a friend's know her. She has, um, uh, we did a show with her, Crime and Corruption. And it's quite a ways, quite a drive between uh, yes. Olympia and Rainier, Washington, where, where Evelyn is located. And um, I was in the back seat yesterday because I get nervous. And so while we were on our way out there, you were, you was telling the story about the place with the vortex in Montana. Oh, yes. Before we, you know, I mean, we have plenty of time, but this is one story I would like for you to relate before we run out of time. It's a wonderful story. Well, of course, um, in any kind of scientific endeavor, including the scientific study of, of society, which is one way of mm -hmm. defining sociology, you get used to believing only what you can measure. That's right. And they call it logical positivism. If you can't weigh it, touch it, see it, smell it, uh, otherwise measure it, it it's, it's doesn't exist. There, yeah. It doesn't exist. Uh, so, it, uh, in that from that tradition, I am kind of like from Missouri. You got to show me mm -hmm. before I'll believe anything. And one day I got this. Uh, when you're in the scenic postcard business, one of the allied things that happens to you is. Your customers will say, oh, couldn't you come out here and do a special postcard or a brochure yeah. of our guest ranch, our tourist trap, our... <laughs> tourist trap. Yeah, oh, I love whatever, it. Whatever, <laughs> you know. The yeah. uh, Yacht Harbor, you know, Yacht Club or, or Resort or whatever. And that's what it was. Here was this place called the House of Mystery, mm -hmm. which is located between Columbia Falls and Glacier Park. I'm going to go there. I am. You okay. should. I am. It's your am. kind of place. Yeah, we're going to take you there eventually. And this guy named Joe Hauber was the owner at the time. And he said, oh, I just need a postcard. I, in fact, I need a strip mm -hmm. of postcards. You know, the kind that have the header, and then you tear off mm -hmm. five or six scenes. Mm -hmm. He said, I have several little experiments that we do on this piece of land back here, which is really what we call a gravity vortex. There's something askew with the forces of gravity back here uh, that make things weigh differently, move differently. Uh, some people get sick, nauseated yeah. Yeah. when they're back there. But he says, my best experiment, and the one I would most dearly like to record on, on, on a postcard with a picture, is the height change. Yeah. I said, what do you mean the height change? He said, well, I've got this railroad tie buried in the ground out there that is absolutely dead level. You can put mm -hmm. pour water on it, it flows off equally. It's got a level buried in it that shows that it's, it's level, dead level. But he says when a person of one height stands on one end of it and a person of a different height stands on the other, the one who's taller, whoever stands closer to the hill becomes much taller than taller, normal. Yeah. And the one who's out a little bit farther on the plank seems to be much shorter than usual. So if you put the tall person here and the shorter person there, the exaggeration is this way. If you switch them around, people of unequal height suddenly become the same. Same, yeah. I said, I got to see it. <laughs> so I went out there and I tried it with him and it happened. And I said, if I can see it, I can measure it. I can take a picture of it. I can prove this on film. He says, that's what I want you to do for my postcard. So I went to the side of this plank set up the camera so that the bottom of the camera frame that you're looking through, the viewfinder, mm -hmm. was absolutely dead parallel with the railroad tie. Mm -hmm. So that you could see that it stayed dead level in the picture. Then I had a couple of young ladies of different height mm -hmm. get on there and switch positions. One of them was about 5'9", the other one was about 5'4". So they were of different That's height. That's quite a bit, yeah. And believe it, when, when, when the tall one was on the outside and the short one on the inside, uh, the hill side, they were identical in height. When they shifted positions and you put the short one on the outside and the tall one on the inside, the tall one was like she was six feet tall and the other one was like she was five feet tall. Incredible. It totally exaggerated and you can see it in the picture. In the picture, yeah. It, it's a strange place, Lily, and you must go. Well, I drew, like I said, I drove through there one time, but um, Health allow next year. I'm gonna. I have a lot of stops mm -hmm. to make, and uh, I would like to. Since you know how it works, you can go with me to work the camera. I live just down mm -hmm. the road a few miles. Yeah, but I thought that was a real. 
really incredible story um, coming from a practical person like you. That's really, yeah, I, that's really wonderful. I didn't think it was going to show on mm -hmm. film. I thought, you know, even when I could see it through the camera, I said, I'll bet you when I get this processed, it doesn't show. It did. It did, but you, you know, sometimes we, um, uh, we don't even see things through the viewfinder the way it really comes up. And I know. That's we've, we've had things on the shows here where um, things showed up that we did not put in here. And uh, especially when we go around like ghost investigations and things, um, you can't see it. And then, and then when it shows up, there it is. So. I've had people, I mean, I, I publish other people's photographs as well as my own in my postcard business because yeah. I can't be everywhere at once and get the perfect yeah. picture. Uh, and I had one guy at one time wanted me to make postcards of some photographs that had things in them that he didn't put in them. Right. They would have auras. Yeah, wonderful. That yeah. came out on film and they were not. Uh, the, that's not what he could, they, there were obviously things that you couldn't do with lighting and mirrors right, and tricks yeah. and so forth. I know photography well enough, and this is before digital photography. This is right. 30 years ago uh, when you couldn't put it in a computer and play with it and, mm -hmm. and give it a special effect. It was just there. I was very impressed, but I realized this is not postcard material. At that time. And maybe at that time. Maybe now you could use it. Now um, you should call him. You'll uh, If I could w just income. remember his name. <laughs> and then I saw specials like, I think it was in Life or Time or Look or something, about a guy that they could take his picture and they'd get an image completely different from different, his yeah. portrait. They would get what he was thinking. Yeah. Uh, yeah, they, they have machines. Now, a lady, uh, an attorney friend of mine lives in, in England, and she just commissioned me to find her um, a good uh, foot. Um, a camera, you know, that that, that takes our uh, photography. I've shared our pictures here with the friends where uh, at, in one of them I had planets coming out of my head. I mean, they just, and, 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 and here they are. And so that's, uh, I believe it has something to do with the energy around the person it and, must. And, and magnetic fields it and, must. and all of the above. Yeah, otherwise, you can't account for it. Mm -hmm. I mean, there it is on film, where'd it come from? Mm -hmm. Now, the opening shot um, that, that we had, um, you, you, oh, with you the, said uh, that was one of your favorites. Uh, I had never seen him before, so I just happened to be picked one. And that shot, I don't know if we can go back to it or we'll, not. But yeah, we'll go back to uh, either now or the, uh, a little bit. gorgeous later. sunset with the two black peaks and the purple yeah. mist. Yeah. My dog and I were in a little van uh, coming over the Beartooth Divide from Montana to to Wyoming. Mm -hmm. It's one of the highest Rocky passes through the Rockies. It's almost a an 11,000 foot pass. And we were coming down the south side, the Wyoming side of it, when this incredible thunder and lightning storm struck. Uh, it was so violent that I was, for the first time in my life, I was scared we were going to be hit by lightning. Mm -hmm. uh, I pulled to the inside of, the, of, of a curve and got off the road, tucked in as tightly as I could against the earth so that we wouldn't protrude right. and make a target for the lightning. And my dog was so scared, she jumped over on my lap and practically peed all over me. I mean, she, <laughs> it was terrible. She, the was, poor, scared. she was scared. <laughs> yeah. to death. We were just sort of sitting there holding yeah. on to each other. With, mind you, tree branches breaking off of trees from the lightning that had been striking, and little fires starting up in the storm, and rocks rolling down the hill and banging off the car. I mean, it was really Bad, yeah. amazing. I thought when it when it passed, I got pretty religious. <laughs> let's <laughs> yeah. put it that way. Yeah. So we got. I said, well, let's get off this mountain while we can, because you couldn't. You could hardly drive during the storm. It was so windy and so much yeah. debris flying around and so much. Uh, rain. But she was on a mission. That's why nothing happened to it you. It must have been a mission. <laughs> yeah. So I walked, uh, or I drove us down to the bottom of the mountain, and I went to have a little picnic and broke out the dog food for the dog and the sandwich for me, and sat there eating it. And I looked up, and the sky had just gone. And you can see it in the picture behind just us now. Just like that. Just like uh, you know, unbelievable illumination of the sky and peaks. And I said, this is it. I've got to have the pictures. I just put down the food and ran out in the river. Mm. Uh, to the river or in the river? Right in the river, in the because river. I wanted to be right down where I could get the maximum reflection on the mm. water, and that meant jumping in after it. Oh. What I'd forgotten is that after a storm on a warm afternoon like that, when everything's wet, the mosquitoes just go crazy. Yeah. And before you know it, I had about 300 of them on me. 
and that you can't be swatting mosquitoes and take a picture like that. You have to hold yeah. still for the picture. So I just had to sit there and let them eat so me. You go to your higher self and step out of yourself, and there you go. I Eddie. didn't know how to do that. In oh, those days. Okay. In fact, I'm not sure I could do it now, but I, yeah. I just went ahead and ignored them and let them eat. And I took about four or five pictures while the sky looked like that, just moving the camera slightly and changing the exposure slightly so I would be sure to have something. And two or three of them came out great, and then it was gone. It was, it was only like a five-minute phenomenon. And uh, I've used that picture. It's been on the cover of magazines and mm -hmm. uh, um, real estate folders and calendars, and yes, the, everybody loves it. You're always in the market for opening shops, so... Hopefully, you'll let me use some of yours. They just beautiful. Well, maybe I'll just leave you that one so you can open oh, with it any time you wish. Use it again. Um, now, let, let, let's see. We talked about that. Um, sometimes I ask the friends if you have a, like a personal message or a personal thought for them. Uh, before you do that, I want to state here that you have promised to come back in a few weeks because you are also one of the founders of FIJA, the Fully Informed Joy Association. That is true. And, and we're going to do um, a whole show on that. And the reason I put that in there as a cliffhanger is because after, um, after you, you know, you might say something to the friends that's important to you, I would also like to ask you if there is a legacy for you to leave behind, which one would it be? Oh, you went and put me on the spot this time. Did I? Okay. I guess if I were to stand for anything, it would be to encourage people to get control of their own lives. Mm -hmm. It's so easy to be controlled by other people. It's comfortable. Sometimes it even pays well. Yeah. Uh, it means that you have very little responsibility. Everything is already somebody else's fault, but it also somebody else gets all the credit. Mm -hmm. um, I think we have... <laughs> Too often we succumb to the temptation to let other people make the decisions for us. Yeah. And the price of that is that you don't have a solid sense of self and it's very hard to feel good about yourself and your life unless you've had some control in shaping it. Yeah. And the, so the, I've run for office several times and I've had these slogans that might kind of illustrate what I'm saying here. Mm -hmm. One time I ran for... Um, secretary or for uh, US senator mm -hmm. in Montana and my slogan was paddle your own canoe yeah and so I canoed from er through every town in Montana in my canoe to illustrate the point that basically if you don't paddle your canoe somebody will paddle somebody it for paddle you for and you. then they get to decide where it goes That's right yeah people are real visual aren't they yeah and it helped I got a, a fairly substantial percentage of the vote because of course, to me, the, the opposite of what I'm saying is good for you is to let the government run your life. Yeah. And as our government gets bigger and bigger and bigger, uh, we find that there's more and more detailed rules mm -hmm. about how we're supposed to behave. I figure the rules of behavior would all fit in one hand. Yeah. You know, like the Ten Commandments and the Bill of Rights or something like all that. That's, that that's, yeah. that's enough rules. Um, for a judge and jury uh, to decide whether right or wrong was done in a particular case. But now every particular case seems to have a regulation or a rule, and that means you've lost control of it. Lost control, yeah. You know, somebody else has made the regs. Mm -hmm. So, so if you, if, now back to the photography for just a minute. Now, when, when you, um, because it might seem like a big deal to us sometimes, but life really has these little, I can't say that word, idiocies. Idiosyncrasies? That's the one. That, thank you. And, and but because when, when you look at the photographs that, that, that you take, everything is so free and, and orderly and natural and going with the flow. So I would think that mentally sometimes it's, um, the, the things that we do as people is probably irrelevant. You know, I'm, I've never really put that into words myself, but I must agree with you. That the photography does real, reveal a, 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 at least a wish to be free and to go with the flows of life rather than to be regulated. Um, people who send me work and say, do you want to make my photograph into a postcard, you know, uh, I send them back a specs sheet. Mm -hmm. This is merely a set of instructions that says, 
we only accept photographs that meet these criteria. Right. It must be this way, that way, and you know, and what do they say? Uh, if you read it, it says, I like no signs of human intervention. So if you look at those photographs, you won't see signs, automobiles, guardrails. Yeah. You know, I don't do that kind of stuff because they all represent limits. Yeah. You know, you go around the curve, and if there's a guardrail, yes, it protects you from going off, but it also reduces your responsibility to drive carefully. That's that, that's a good point. Yeah, that's right. And so I think I'm picking up on what you're saying here. Yeah. The photographs do reveal a personality type, and so. Oh, I think a lot of the reason my, my postcard company you know, has been as successful as it has mm -hmm. been is people, without having a conscious awareness of it, mm -hmm. identify with the freedom in the picture. Yeah, so, so your, your, work, your, your work with the photographs really reflects your inner self if you stop and think about it. Yeah, and I just did, and yeah. it's all your fault. Oh, good. <laughs> uh, yeah, there we go. Yeah, sometimes we have little epiphanies on this show. We have, we have disturbances and things like that. Uh, but I, I think it's just incredible now when when I go places and uh, I take pictures, uh, you know, mm -hmm. by camera or by video, much like you. And my children, every, they always say, well, um, did you get any pictures? And uh, I tell them, yeah, right here. And they say, where's the people? And it's at that time I realized, oh, well, ooh, <laughs> I forgot about the people. You know, because creation is just so awesome, isn't it? Yeah, I think, uh, well, of course, there's a great market and a great need and demand for people pictures, but it's mm -hmm. not my specialty. Yeah. I do take pictures of people a lot, but I don't like to mix the scenery and the people. Actually, There's exactly. Some, yeah. You either do people or, or, or you do that. So back to the legacy. Um. Well, that would be it. You know, uh, even with the fully informed jury mm -hmm. association, the message is you are an important individual. You have you came endowed by the Creator with certain rights and responsibilities, and that uh, the best thing you can do in this life, for the most satisfying life that you can live, is to take control of it for yourself. So, the least amount of government, the most amount of self-government. Mm -hmm. uh, and I've, I've uh, I guess my photographs express that. Mm -hmm. My teachings certainly has expressed that. When I did teach college, I was of that ilk. Mm -hmm. And of course, in sociology classes, dealing with things like governments and power and so forth yeah. is part of the program. And I'm sure I left an impression there similar to the one I'm, I, would, I left when I ran for office. Um, but uh, with the Fully Informed Jury Association, it's really the same thing. It says, you're 12 ordinary people sitting here judging rightness and wrongness on the mm -hmm. part of an accused person. Uh, don't worry so much about the formal rules yeah. or whether this person is guilty or not guilty. Read the evidence, think about the case, reach into your heart of hearts, use your <coughs> conscience, mm -hmm. and do what justice demands. In, you know, mm -hmm. in your estimate, what is the proper thing to do for justice, to serve the cause of justice here, because that blind lady out there with the dishes, the dishes. she needs help. Mm -hmm. Now, you live, uh, is your headquarters, or uh, you lived, uh, what, what is the little town with the 28 people? Let's get to <laughs> it's, that. It's in Helmville. Helmville, and um, you, you t we have a few minutes left. We told, you told another story of how people, how things was trying to regulate you and how you remedied that with Yes, um, actually, <laughs> actually, uh, the, one of the reasons I live in such a tiny town is there's no government. Mm -hmm. We have to settle things personally in Helmville. We're 54 miles from the county seat of Deer Lodge, Montana. I've been there. Yes, Deer Lodge is on the main highway the main through the highway. state. Mm -hmm. uh, but we're 54 miles away up in a little mm -hmm. corner of the county. I can find that. I bet you can. Yeah. And if you get in an argument with somebody, you go over to his door and you have it out, you know, or you go down to the bar, it might end up with a punch in the nose, it might not, but you don't call a lawyer. You don't call a police. You don't, I mean, that's ridiculous yeah. under those circumstances. You have to deal with your problems, your successes, and your failures personally in a little community. There are no parking meters. There's no crosswalks. There's no left, no left turn signs. There's, 
There's nothing like that. Life is not very regulated in Helmville, and somehow we survive. You did, yeah. We survive rather well. That's the best environment for me. Mm -hmm. And not very many people can achieve it because today most of the jobs are in big cities where everywhere you go there's signs and, and rules. Now, now do, you, uh, uh, you, do you find that with your grandchildren that you can install the principles you have now in your grandchildren and that we some kind of way skip that one generation in between? You know, that's a really tough one uh -huh. because of course, when you're dealing with the grandchildren, you have to take into consideration the wishes of their parents, your own children. But are you can still you know, I really think some of the that. toys we give the grandkids encourage them to seek their own way. Be more like us. Be say. more like us. Yeah. But I uh, must also give great credit to my daughter and her husband mm -hmm. for allowing those children to have a great deal of freedom. Mm -hmm. In some cases, we may disagree, but they're doing a heck of a job. Uh, and so. I figure when we send them books, mm -hmm. we send books that, st that stress uh, the beauty of individual liberty. Mm -hmm. When we send them videotapes, the same thing. Um, and, and, and so we encourage in, the, in our grandchildren uh, the idea of finding your own way. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't have to be the same way that I found or that you found, but it's satisfying to know that those bright little minds are being used not to follow the leader or to uh, obey every word that comes down to them, but to question authority and ask about the legitimacy of it before just falling in line. And yes. So they may be little extroverts and they may be little rebels, but I think it's good for them or I wouldn't be doing it. So when we look at the new, the new kids, you know, the, our young ones, and we talk about the young children often, you know, if, if they can maintain the the telepathy that they already have and, and the way they look at things and that intuitiveness that we didn't really allow our kids because it wasn't acceptable. But now, on the other hand, you know, we can relax and, and make uh, better choices. I think there's, in the long run, there is really hope for, for the world. What do you think? Ultimately, to do anything in the way of activism, you have to be an optimist, and I am. Mm -hmm. Uh, I get very cynical about the way things happen sometimes. I get angry at the way the media bend the truth and the way the politicians mm -hmm. manipulate us and the way the school system it, you know, leaves out certain things from the curriculum and puts other things in. It's very discouraging if you look around sometimes. On the other hand, I think there's hope because the human mind is a very fertile field. Mm -hmm. And as a uh, philosophy professor of mine once illustrated, once, once you free a person mm -hmm. to make decisions of his own or her own and accept the consequences of those decisions, that person really can't go back to being a robot again. Yeah, because you can't unknow things. You Absolutely can't unknow right. things. It's a perfect way to put it. Mm -hmm. And so in, in this class that I took from her at the University of Montana, Cynthia mm -hmm. Schuster was, was her name, um, when the final grades were distributed in her class, she gave the highest grades to those who took, took on the riskiest term mm -hmm. papers, the ones that if you blew it, you really blew it. Blew it, yeah. And I took on the riskiest of all. Mm -hmm. You know, I turned mine in at the absolute deadline uh, when she had told the entire class, if you turn it in ahead of time, I will, I will go through it and edit it and correct it, and you can turn it in twice. Mm -hmm. And then the second time, you can take care of the mistakes that you made in the first draft. I, I was very busy that quarter. I didn't have the time to do it twice, so I turned it in about four minutes before the final deadline. And she called me up that night. A professor, I was I'm not used to this. She called me up at home, and she said, Mr. Dodge, she said, this is a very interesting final term paper that you've turned into me. She says, however, there's a fatal flaw in your logic. Mm -hmm. And I have to give the paper a D. And of course, we all knew that the only grade, the only basis for your grade in her class was, was this one flaw. paper. <laughs> oh, one paper. So yeah. if you got a D on the paper, you got a D in the it, class. Yeah. I said, well, you know, I, I took my chances. I, I knew I was in risky ground arguing these philosophical points the way I did. But I said, you know, 
uh, it was a great class. I don't care what grade you give to me. Mm -hmm. She said, fine. She says, in, in that case, why don't you come over and we'll talk about your paper? And I said, tonight? <laughs> yeah. It was like 8.30 p.m., you know. And she said, yeah, come on over. So I hopped on my motorcycle and went over to Professor Schuster's house, and we discussed that paper. And I went back home. I was so excited about, about learning what it, it took to make it mm -hmm. work out right. I went home and rewrote the whole thing. It, uh... Turned it in the following Monday. The grades came out Tuesday. Mm -hmm. So she had already turned in the grades Friday. I got an A in that course. Wow. I called her up. I said, Dr. Schuster, how did this happen? She said, well, she says, the paper's one thing. She says, but you're the only one to take the risks and pay the consequences, so you get the only A. How wonderful. Now, now, what uh, I, I really have to say something here about the friends that, you know, we had wonderful friends that made it possible for you to take this oh, trip yes. over here. And in your travels, um, if you have any friends that have uh, flaws, um, or, or like to take risks, any time they know Olympia, have them come see me, and they are welcome guests on the show. We sort of have to run. Give my love to your wonderful wife. Um, thank you, I will. Honey, and uh, we see you in a few weeks. And um, thanks, thank you, crew. I think we did a wonderful job today. Thank you. It's been a pleasure being it's, on your show. It's been a little. It's been a little, a little strange, but it wasn't too bad, was it? It wasn't bad at all. It wasn't bad at all. After all, we're talking high strangeness. High strangeness. Here. That's it. Okay, <laughs> come see us again next week. Mm -hmm. Bye bye. That scene right there is...